Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Bernoulli drive from iOmega. This was iOmega's flagship product for over a decade before the zip drive came out. And it's named after the 18th century physicist Bernoulli, who came up with the Bernoulli principle, which states that an increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure. That is used heavily in two 20th century inventions, the carburetor and the airplane wing. In the case of the Bernoulli drives, they spin the disc five times faster than a floppy disk, and basically that makes the disc bend or float up towards the head. And the head actually doesn't go down like it does on most drives. So the disc will go up to the head because it's spinning so fast, and if there's a catastrophic power failure, it just kind of naturally goes back down. So it's almost impossible to have a head crash on a Bernoulli disc because of the way it works. And these were considered very reliable back in the day, which is kind of ironic considering all the trouble IMEG would have later with the zip. So these came out in the early 80s. The discs for them were very large back then, the size of a A4 sheet of printer paper. They were quite huge. And I thought about trying to get one of those. I thought that would be kind of cool. But that was before SCSI was standardized and iOmega would sell you a controller card with your Bernoulli drive. And the information's really scarce on this on the internet, but it was some kind of pre-SCSI standard. So it probably was a SASE card, which was the precursor of SCSI. And apparently that wasn't 100% compatible with SCSI once it got standardized in 1986. So I didn't want to mess with anything that old because I just with all the adapters and everything, I just didn't think it was going to work. So. I went with a newer type of Bernoulli drive, which came out in the late 80s, and they had uh, shrunk the disc down some by then. It kind of looks like a huge three and a half inch floppy drive, but that's, uh, so for reference, that's what a regular three and a half floppy drive looks like. And this particular model was made in 1991, so trying to remember where you were when Terminator 2 came out, and that's when this particular 90 megabyte, uh, excuse me, 90 megabyte model was made. And there were a lot of these on eBay, but they're either all sold as not working or sold for parts, or I don't know if it works because nobody has a SCSI computer anymore. They can't like test all these things to see if they're still working. Um, this particular one, the guy said was tested and working. So I took a chance and got it. And let's flip around and look on the back here. There's a nice little uh, handle here that you can uh, carry it with. It was made to be uh, portable somewhat. I don't trust these old plastics now, so I don't carry it around by the handle anymore. So here we have the uh, normal SCSI 1 Centronics connectors. SCSI ID selector, I had that set on zero, if you remember from my last video. Uh, always has to be on zero for this USB adapter. And it has built-in SCSI termination, so I don't need to put the terminator on there, which is really nice. I didn't realize uh, 91 there. I didn't realize they already had that that far back. Another interesting thing about these drives is you could also use them with a parallel port. So like if you're on a PC that didn't have a SCSI card. And it's got this parallel port power um, plug here. And I'm not, I can't find anything about this on the Internet, but it must have powered some kind of adapter or something like that externally. And uh, the other thing that was odd, too, was that these Centronics connectors are white. And all of the other Bernoulli drives I saw on eBay were blue. And all the Apple SCSI devices are blue. It's just pretty common to see these as blue. So I'm not sure why there's a white, but uh, we'll come back to that in a second. So anyway, I got this in. And I got some new discs, new in, new in box sealed uh, 90 megabyte uh, Bernoulli discs. And I powered it up, and just the just the exhaust fan would come on. I could not get the drive to power up at all, and I was really worried. And I found out if I took the USB adapter, the USB SCSI adapter off the back of it, the drive would fire up. And I was like, oh, great. Is this some incompatibility with this thing? What's going on here? I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to do this video. So I did some more digging online, and I found a little um, schematic of the jumpers inside of this device. And uh, this was made to be serviceable by um, customers because you just have four little tabs you got to poke in here with a, a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and the lid comes right off. And 
there were some pins there and one of them was jumpered and it was just the letter P. And on the other side was a jumper that said term power. So term power in SCSI is not the same thing as the terminator that we talked about in the last video that you put on the last device on a daisy chain of SCSI uh, devices. Um, term power supplies five volts on pin 26, I think. So I think what's happening here, what I did was I took the jumper off of the P pin and I put it on the term power, turned it back on and it just worked. It automatically came on my iMac and, and it just worked, it was great. So I think what's happening here, this is just a theory that kind of fits the facts. I think that this was a pre-configured parallel port version that may explain why these were white. And you certainly don't want term power on a parallel port. You don't want sending five volts up a pin, it shouldn't be. So I think that jumper P meant parallel port and you just put it over on that one instead of the term power and use it with parallel port. So um, I, think that's, I think that's what was going on. So once I got that jumpered correctly, it fired right up and worked. So let's see if we can get it to work with the iPhone. I will be right back and I'll get all of this set up. Okay, and we're back. Let's see if we can get this to work with the iPhone. Hey Siri, fire up the Bernoulli drive. Did you remember to put the disc in? Actually, Siri, you can't put a Bernoulli disc in until the drive is on. As Mr. Spock would say, fascinating. One Bernoulli drive coming right up. And there it is, right away. Now, if you see my last video with that Apple Hard Disk 20 SC, you know it took three minutes and 30 seconds to show up on the Mac or the iPhone. It was very bizarre because it wasn't doing it on Windows or any other device I plugged it into. And I was wondering if this was a bug with the Mac and the iOS and SCSI 1 to SCSI 2 USB adapters or something like that, but that's not the case because this comes up right away. So it's just some odd quirk with that uh, 20 megabyte hard drive from 1986. So anyway, um, this drive comes up perfectly fine. Let's go over into my phone. I'll copy some files to it. See the little drive flashing on and off. Activity light. to the disk itself and as usual I've got some pictures here and um, a song as well let's try this song we'll let it cache here for a few seconds This is not quite as fast as the HD20 was in the last video. It's more in line with the zip and the jazz drive as far as responsiveness. Uh, maybe a tad faster, it's hard to say. So oh, everything works great and it comes up right away, which is great. So it's not some inherent bug with SCSI 1 and SCSI 2. So that bodes well for the future. And yeah, it just works. It just works really great. Hey Siri, turn off the Bernoulli drive. You got it, boss. 
No, Siri, not the basement lights, the Bernoulli drive. Sorry, boss. My bad. Bernoulli drive shutting down. So, like I've talked about many times before with removable media, there's no eject button. And this locks the drive in place, so you can't take it out while it's in use. So, like some of the other ones, we'd have to uh, basically disconnect it and then hit that old eject button. And you can hear it, the latching unlock right there. And then I can take the disc out again. So there you have it. 1991 Bernoulli drive from iOmega. Works perfectly fine in all ways with the iPhone. I really hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please like and subscribe. I've got many more to come soon, but that's all for now. Take care.